Sanjay Nath has a bachelor's degree from Ishtilani. He is a co-founder and managing partner at Blue Ventures, one of India's leading early stage venture funds, whom focuses on C to pre series A stages of funding and has made over 100 investments across its 10 year history across multiple funds. Sanjay has invested in and advises a wide portfolio of startups, including Play Orange, Robotrix, DataV, Focus, Tycor, LVV, Lulu, and many others. All right. Thanks, all of you, for joining us today. It's really an honor to host you all. Thanks for inviting us. Hello, everyone. Hey, guys. Always nice to meet fellow Bitsians. Thanks, Noah. Thanks for having us. Great to be here. Okay, so since a lot of the audience might be first year students and they haven't had any exposure to campus or to everything that happens on campus, I doubt that a lot of them might even know how VC works, what venture capital is. So Swati, if we could start with you, could you, uh, in as simple a way as possible, explain what venture capital is? Right. So guys, uh, think of VC, it's, it's, it's a financial capital, which is being provided to early stage, high potential growth companies. Uh, in layman, the, the, not exactly in layman, the venture, the venture capital fund earns money by holding a part of equity in the company it invests in. So compared to angel investors, uh, VC uh, comprises of more professionals who would help you in much more than providing capital. Be it access to its networks, strategy planning, hiring, helping with future fundraise, or simply providing a channel to hear you out. Because mind you, being a founder can be can be lonely sometimes. So uh, investors uh, to the fund, as we call them, LPs, limited partners, are typically HNIs or large institutions such as uh, pension funds, financial firms, insurance companies who who put in a small percentage of their total investable partners. And and typically expect about a return of upwards of ten percent per year over the lifetime of the fund. Uh, exits to a fund makes money when when they when a portfolio makes an exit and exits are uh, typically uh, via an MA &A, &A route, an IPO, uh, secondary sale to uh, to late late stage VCs or PEs, uh, promoter buybacks. Uh, I would say timing is everything to a VC, both uh, from an in investment and uh, exit perspective, and the power law rules. So, so more than so less than twenty percent of the portfolio will will make more than eighty percent of the returns for a fund. So, this is in a nutshell how a VC works. But, but happy to answer questions. All right, Nilesh, you don't run a venture fund; it's venture debt, right? Uh, one of India's biggest venture debt funds. So could you uh, explain what venture debt is and how it is different? Sure. Uh, you know, we are as much as a, uh, as much a venture capital firm as any other. Uh, we just provide alternate capital that is scarcely available in the country. So venture debt is just another form of, of uh, capital. It's structured differently. Uh, it is capital that is returnable. And, uh, you know, the skills uh, and an assessment that we do when we make venture debt investments is same as, as venture capital. Uh, we, you know, Swati just talked about exits uh, and how venture capital firms make money. Uh, we recently launched our late stage secondaries fund. Uh, that's a $200 million fund. And so, uh, you know, that, that's another form of capital that is scarcely available in this country. If you understand India's venture capital ecosystem is about 16, 17 years old, and it's an evolving ecosystem. And so, uh, uh, you know, different forms of capital are still emerging at, 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 at scale. Uh, venture it was something that we started six years ago, and today it is a it is reasonably well recognized, and there are a few other venture debt players who come in. So that's that's a capital, uh, you know, type of capital that is now becoming more and more available to startups. Uh, equally, what we are trying to do now is pioneering the late stage secondaries, uh, which is again the first of its kind, uh, you know, in the country, and hopefully, uh, you know that that. That form of capital also will be made available uh, in, in in larger quantities uh, and and serve the ecosystem because you need you need everything at every stage yeah 
otherwise uh, the whole uh, ecosystem is inefficient but uh, just on venture debt it's uh, you know swati mentioned uh, when she invests and when uh, sanjay invest uh, they're looking for a 30 percent irr uh, venture debt costs a third of that uh, it's his capital that is returnable unlike venture capital which is permanent uh, venture debt is non-dilutive venture debt uh, is, is is best used for financing working capital, capex, acquisitions, and things like that. So, uh, you know, it, it just is, is complementary to venture capital and any startup that is looking to build a business should always consider the capital structure to be a combination of venture capital and venture debt. Yeah, that helps in, in uh, lesser founder dilution. It helps improve IRR for all the shareholders, including the VCs. But, uh, uh, you know, equally, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it results in higher ROE because when your equity is low and the overall valuation of the company is high, your ROE is, goes up. And when companies go for an IPO and things like that, or when PE funds get involved, then ROE is a very, very important metric that gets measured. Yeah. So, you know, that's a little bit about venture debt, but you know, happy to talk a little bit more as we go along. All right. Um, okay. So all of you are people who went to engineering colleges, but you all have found yourselves on the funding side of the startup ecosystem. So what was your journey like to getting in the world of venture funding? Sanjay, sir, we'll start with you. What, how, how did you get from bits to bloom? Sure, that's 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 a great reason. Um, you know, all of us have different paths, right? I'll just share my uh, mine in one sense. I think of myself as an accidental VC also. So my path was, uh, you know, I'm a Bombay boy, and I actually never left Bombay till I went to Pilani, and uh, uh, it's it's really different, right? I mean, it's uh, obviously a beautiful. I mean, all the campuses are great. Uh, for me, I think one of the things I've heard about Pilani was that. We uh, the seniors would win all the quizzes. I think Nilesha, the uh, Nilesha and I, at the older end of the spectrum, there used to be this uh, quiz master Siddharth Basu, and there was this thing I think called Quiz Time, and Bits Milani was known. Bits was known as you know these really smart uh, smart kids, and uh, uh, it was the hometown of the Birlas, and also I think the only still the only university with a gliding club attached to it. I think that's still true, and uh, so I spent four years there. Um, then, like many folks, you know, went to the U.S. Uh, uh, I didn't know anything about angel investing or venture capital. I was I spent about a decade across uh, PwC and IBM doing management consulting. And uh, even though I was in the Valley, my start in venture capital actually came through the Mumbai Angels, which is, of course, you know, based in India. And I used to visit as a, a management practitioner. I mean, with IBM as a senior consultant and. You know, was lucky invested in a small company called Inmobi. This is like 12 years ago. Uh, got very intrigued because basically, and and you know, it's great uh, that you're doing this uh, Noah for us. I was very intrigued by how young folks starting up, you know, are uh, don't have fear. Uh, you know, just like Samay and Akash starting from Grey Orange Robotics, great story. Right, one of our first investments. Said, this is really exciting, right? To be part of like the new India, and uh, I think this was the. I would say that uh, the second wave of entrepreneurship, you know, the first one, I would say Bazi had started. Uh, some of you may remember now Subhi and Avinish are both at Matrix and Nexus. This happened in 2002, I think. Then uh, finally, of course, another of your uh, bits came to Adam I started Red Bus. Uh, at that time, they were quite 140 million. You know, today, I mean, you have uh, Series B and Series C rounds that happened at 140, but it was a fantastic story. Funny is a you know, story. That, uh, alumnus, and I got very, very excited. So basically decided to move back uh, in 2011, uh, got, got, you know, met Karthik, Karthik Reddy, my partner, similar story. He went to Root, he did his MBA in the US, also came back. And and uh, I will say this, uh, uh, which is a true story, you know, we applied uh, for jobs, uh, both of us to VCs, and at least my feedback was that I was out of India too long, I really didn't understand India. And Karthik did the same, and uh, we just found each other and said, "Hey, listen, let's become entrepreneurs and start, you know, start a fund that will back startups." So, you know, it's not the uh, direct path, but often, at least, I feel I tell youngsters that you take a fork, and sometimes the tougher fork becomes more interesting in the road. 
uh, that was my path. Uh, obviously, you know, I went to business school, so I didn't understand finance, but uh, it was not the tried and true tested path. And, uh, you know, today, of course, we are on the third fund going to our fourth. Uh, uh, you know, three offices, Delhi, uh, Bangalore, and Mumbai, and uh, very excited. I think uh, while we are all locked down, unfortunately, if you see what's happening in the ecosystem, it's become a little crazy on the other end. So I think it's very interesting to be part of the ecosystem today. For sure, that's that's a very cool story. Oh, Swati, ma'am, what about you? Okay, so uh, I start. I graduated from Bits in uh, in 2011 and uh, went straight for my MBA. I think MBA was a. Uh, I just uh, I was late in applying for uh, for the US because I think uh, electrical CDC is just wear you out. So so that's how I went for an MBA. Uh, in a career banker uh, throughout, but in that process got to interact with a lot of founders and VCs. Uh, for me, the decision to move to a VC was more from a learnings aspect because uh, financial markets will allow you some degree of understanding of businesses, but VC allows you in depth day to day uh, understanding the highlights and struggles of a business. So I think that's the aspect that attracted me most to a VC. And uh, incidentally, the move was also facilitated by a bit in uh, Harry Menon of, uh, of Big Pascal. So yeah, that's that's my VC story so far. That's great. Uh, Nilesh, sir? Uh, you know, I've had a very interesting journey to this point. Uh, my uh, my campus job was uh, in sales and marketing with HCL. And uh, I was always very passionate about finance. So I went to Bombay. And, uh, you know, was part of the other Tibirla group. But I was very enterprising, I think. Uh, you know, always, and I ended up working with many startups in those days. You didn't call them startups. You call them new projects. So as part of, uh, you know, Bangalore refinery, I was part of the GM mutual fund. Uh, you know, eventually ended up founding a, a, a very interesting business with a few Americans called Zenta sold it to Accenture. And I was the global head for ventures and acquisition to Accenture, uh, you know, where I had a budget of a billion dollars and I was investing globally. Uh, some in cutting edge technology. Uh, you know, for Accenture uh, and, and some in minority investments and, and JVs and so on and so forth. And, uh, uh, you know, having worked both in India and outside India in very large, uh, you know, platforms, um, you know, I realized that, you know, I wanted, I, want, I was a keen business builder. And, uh, you know, I did realize the, the momentum that the startup ecosystem was gaining in India, was uh, you know seeing the journey of how youngsters are thinking today through my own son, who incidentally went to you know graduate from Stanford last year, sold his startup already now in a second, oh. and I was seeing all these you know challenges of India, uh, whether it is education, agriculture, logistics, healthcare, which could only be solved by leveraging technology, and it was only the younger generation who could do it. And I said, how do you? How does one become part of it? And so, like typical so, consultants, uh, I and my co-founder, we sat down to identify the gaps, and we said, "Let's let's solve the problems of the ecosystem by you know filling the gaps." And and that led to you know venture debt as one of our verticals, uh, the technology solutions vertical that we have. We're building products for startups uh, so that they can get us get smarter about you know how they run their business. And the third vertical is the equity secondaries vertical that I mentioned to you about. And it's been a phenomenal journey. I mean, today uh, yeah, we work with 72, you know, phenomenal portfolio companies, uh, many from Swatsky's portfolio, uh, many from, uh, uh, you know, Sanjay's portfolio. Uh, but, uh, you know, what, what we enjoy the most is, 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 is the quality of the portfolio that we've built today we boast of 10 unicorns and another 10 that we will add in the next 10 11 months so 20 of our 72 companies will be unicorns and that's just incredible so it's been it's been a fun journey and funnily enough as we are supporting the startup ecosystem we're building our own startup called trifecta capital so uh, you know it's like building our own business and, and helping build businesses that's awesome Speaking of the unicorns in your portfolio, we, we'll start with you and then we'll go to all of the other panelists. 
can you tell me what are some characteristics that you look for in the startups that you fund what are some things that need to be there for you to feel like okay this this team is worth going with yeah so you know uh, we are not stage investors like uh, swati and uh, and sanjay are so we are more growth stage investors and growth stage we are looking for how large is the market opportunity what is the competitive intensity is this company capable of becoming number 1 or number 2 else we don't want to get involved uh, what is uh, you know how how passionate is the founder how what kind of relevant experience uh the quality of the investors uh, the regulatory issues around it uh we also look at product market fit we look at margins uh, path to profitability and so on and so forth but inherently you're backing a founder yeah so that that always gets uh, you know outweighed uh, amongst these 63 different criteria that we look at in our venture debt business uh our equity business will just invest in our venture debt portfolio companies which we now built a relationship with over the last few years so that is easier but on the venture debt side uh, yeah it's it's broadly these uh, there are a few nitty gritties but broadly we backing the founder okay swati ma'am uh inventus for example is an early stage vc so we look at businesses in the same light as in we will not put too much stress on projections financial ratios etc uh, i think the founding team and target mar- uh, target market are are two important factors for our investment we do look for uh, pr- product market fit that helps but it, it's not a necessary necessary condition so if you are a tech founder passionate about your business business feel feel free to reach out to us that's right. that's my okay and sanjay sir sure you know no i think uh, this is uh, you asked a great question and it's a toughest question to answer because there's no formula right even if you ask the best vc in the valley um, i think both nilesh and swati have put it well i'll just add a you know maybe a different dimension so like uh, they said when trifecta when a you know growth capital whether it's equity or a venture that looks at it data starts becoming very important right because you're investing in a business model and you have traction to see Uh, I'll give you an example. When we backed, uh, uh, let's say, Samaya Nakash at Grey Orange, or what we've done with uh, Swati at uh, with Abhis and Shitej at Pixel, right? Uh, I mean, we met them literally straight from campus. Like Nilesh has been talking about his uh, older son. Um, uh, in fact, what is really interesting is when we, when you come in that early. Uh, when I came to Plani, uh, you know, after my 25th year reunion, for my 25th year reunion. Uh, one of the deans said there were about 80 business plans being started on campus, and he said that's a wonderful thing. And what do you back when you you know when you have no data, right? You're basically backing a founders. Uh, obviously, they have to go after a very large market, but you're backing them with a passion and almost an obsession to change something, right? Either it is a white space or they want to change something that. Uh, that they're really passionate about. Of course, they want to create value and make money, but that is a byproduct, right? That's not the driving mission. So, if you look at Samay and Akash's case, they. I remember we had a bloom day. Uh, we had just had three exits. Uh, you know, Zip Dial, which had acquired, which was acquired by Twitter, Taxi for Sure, which was acquired by Ola. And I remember Samay coming across and telling Karthik and me that, you know, you have three panelists that have had exits, and then one panelist that. Doesn't want to exit for another ten or twenty years, right? And the reason I mentioned that was that that it was such a long-term game, and these founders really want to build something long-term. If you look at a Gaurav an Academy and Nilesh also has unicorns and Swati, you all have Policy Bazaar in your portfolio. So I think you're backing founders who want to build something very large, uh, very long-term, and you have you can do all the analysis you want, but like Nilesh said, you're basically backing the founders because. Uh, I, you know, I'll, 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 uh, I'll say there's, there's a very interesting line that uh, there's uh, that nowhere has fiction been written more than in an Excel file, right? There's more fiction than Excel than in Word. So when you're coming really early, all it's is projections, right? Projections will change. Uh, uh, the business model will change. You're basically backing the founders, basically backing the founders' ability to figure it out along the way, right? uh nilesh i think a lot like offering big students college admissions right you basically backing a student to come in to figure out his or her way after four five years uh pretty much your mission statement will change right your values won't but your your 
your uh, mission also won't, but your the path will change. And I think that's what you're basically backing founders to go up to a very, very large market and then figure out their way in all the pitfalls and challenges come along the way, they'll figure out the way somehow. Right. So you're backing somebody's ability to figure it out. And and go and, and really create a large impact. That's very important. The larger fund size you are, the more it happens. If you're an angel, it's very different, remember, because there you can support it. You know, a 10 million, 15 million exit is very different from for a hundred million fund. For us, the outcome has to be very large. So the passion is always the same, but the size of the outcome and what the founders want to achieve uh, changes. Right. What about cases where the market is responding to a particular startup, but you don't understand the business yourself? Do you feel like you would still fund it? Sanjay, so we'll start with you. So this is an interesting point. Uh, uh, you know, often there are two schools of thought. One is, I think, uh, one doesn't invest in areas you don't understand, right? So I would say that as an own example, if you look at our own evolution, Noah, from fund one to fund three today, fund one was very much uh, a network, relationship, uh, co-investor and founder driven. I think we've become far more specific driven. Like I'll give you an example. You know, we invested in Pixel, where invent Inventus is also there, uh, junior, big juniors. I know Aves and Shitej are quite well known on campus. Um, but this time we had a space tech thesis. Not only that, we had the drone thesis. Uh, we had a, obviously a SaaS thesis, right? And all those things came together. So I think we got much smarter at that thesis. If you had asked us to invest in Pixel five, 10 years ago, it would be very different, right? We didn't understand it. Um, and I think usually it's good to definitely understand the space you're going because when things are going well, you really don't need that thesis. But when things are not, then you really have to dig back and go back to those IC, IC memos and you know, what are the risks, right? Did you think about them? Uh, there are always risks, but did you think about how the founders will react to the risk like we talked about? But, you know, I'll, I'll say an interesting uh, wrinkle is sometimes new investors have, like new founders, have a big advantage because as you get older, you also get more jaded, right? Because let's say you tried it before and somebody didn't, you start thinking about uh, what if it goes wrong? And we have to also think about what if it goes right, right? And sometimes if a new investor, experience is great, but it but bad experiences can also make you jaded. Young, you're unafraid and you will make mistakes, but you don't have that baggage to deal with, right? So it's always a balance. All right. Swati, ma'am, do you have a different answer to the same question? No, I do agree to Sanjay's point that there are two schools of thoughts here. I would just put in our perspective. So at uh, uh, Inventus, uh, it's it's more like you know uh, when we when we think about uh, investments, we would we would think about you know reaching out to all our networks, doing that research, going through that literature to understand fully about the the problem that the uh, entrepreneur entrepreneur is trying to solve think about how the, the solution pans out and uh, you know but it's more than just capital that we want to be able to provide to entrepreneurs so so typically if we see that something which is not uh, you know it's not we're not convinced about the whole thing we would we would just humbly pass it pass it we we'll acknowledge it and pass it it's it's because you know, our our aim is to add value to the portfolio much more than funding, and and we feel if we can't do it, we'll we'll let somebody else do it. So so that's how we approach this uh, this added added interest. Okay, uh, Nilay sir. You know, I just call Swati and Sanjay because mm -hmm. they do all this all this hard work. But uh, uh, you know, I think uh, the fundamental rule in investing is. You know, if you don't understand the business, you shouldn't be investing in it. Yeah. Uh, and there are a lot of times, so at Trifecta, we have an incredible team. Uh, you know, almost everybody is either a venture capitalist or an entrepreneur. And there have been times when I don't understand a business and I will, you know, just gently pass it to, you know, a colleague of mine who may be better positioned to understand the business. And, uh, uh, you know, since we have the kind of people we have, you know, we can have, uh, you know, very interesting conversations. We have deep networks. Uh, we can reach out to them and we try hard to understand the business. And sometimes even then, you know, we, 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 we probably are not able to. But the good news is that by the time a business, you know, is ready for us, you know, it's kind of evolved. It's already three to five years old. So I, I would guess, uh, 
you know stargazing is what uh, is what sanjay and and uh, you know swati do a better job of uh, you know than us right okay are there any particular sectors or technologies that you are uh, any of you are specifically excited about for the next 5 to 10 years nilay sir will start with you listen that's uh, you know vc comes in waves yeah so you had a you had a wave of on demand you had a wave of grocery you had a wave of horizontal vertical uh, you know then you had edtech then you had actech so vc always <laughs> sorry uh, you know happens in waves uh, there is uh, you know gaming pandemic suddenly accelerated you know there are businesses in our portfolio that were that had become lifestyle and suddenly got reactivated because of pandemic yeah uh, because suddenly there are lifestyle changes globally that have happened so uh, you know we are excited about about everything digital we are excited about d2c brands that are getting built which are also leveraging technology uh, we are excited about uh, you know rural india we are excited about uh you know tier 3 tier 4 uh, of businesses that are serving customers in tier 3 tier 4 towns because a lot of stuff for tier 1 tier 2 metros has already been done we are excited about businesses that are you know being built for bharat as compared to india you know which was the first wave i mean for 6 mm-hmm. years 8 years ago was bharat it was you know uh, us mein chalta hai in india mein chala do you know can you make an uber for india and things like that i think that has changed that mentality has changed all of us have grown up and entrepreneurs are now coming with problems for bharat which means you have to be able to speak their language yeah i recently met a uh, uh, you know a fantastic entrepreneur who is solving the problem i mean she is from a small village went to iit delhi and is now trying to consolidate uh, trade and business around cattle and india is the largest cattle owning country and it is all uh, you know very manual you know, farmers have to travel like 200 kilometers 100 kilometers sometimes just to sell their cap- cattle and perhaps then come back so uh, and this girl is talking about building technology and she's doing like 280 crores of business a month i mean that's incredible wow. she only speaks hindi so we are seeing now this new wave of entrepreneurs who coming from small towns who have better better uh, understanding of the problems and and understand how to solve them so it's it's just in you know phenomenal we seeing you know interesting saas companies you know a, a few years ago you couldn't think of indians building you know uh, saas businesses and products and now you know saas is 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 a big wave and and uh, we we just we just made an investment in a very exciting saas company uh you know that that is likely a unicorn in the next 5 years um and so you know we've now better understood how to build product and sell it you know earlier we were not very good at selling the product and uh, you know for a long time we used to focus on the wrong markets wrong set of clients i think there have been a lot of learnings and and so this momentum will continue but just from a trifecta perspective you know we see opportunity just everywhere everywhere right that's pretty cool uh, sanjay sir what about you sure um you know i think nilesh has got into a lot of the verticals and the themes i just said share a bit on the trends also uh, you know picking up on saas um you know i think 2020 uh, and of course you know for the foreseeable future future has shown that that you can build great software and platforms from anywhere right uh, even it not and not just i mean this not the value you see ui path coming up from romania data path came from france scan from australia and if you look at our own blue portfolio we very proud that we have two bits in startups which have done really well doing really well gray orange uh robotics which you know we hope should become a unicorn uh, sometime soon uh, we've got nishit actually from your campus uh, from uh, bits goa nishit so we have locus uh, you know right there uh, it's been well expanding internationally and basically uh, basically the reason that's happened is because enterprise behavior has moved to the cloud right and behavior just like your startups just like vcs are sitting on zoom or uh, cisco webex 
so our founders and so are buyers, right? I mean, it's not like, you know, uh, India we're sitting remotely and or the whole world has come back. So if you look at the way SaaS is being priced, it's being changed. If you look at, uh, uh, for example, SaaS is not just a vertical, but it's a model, right? Grey Orange is trying to build a robotics or a R SaaS business. I mean, it's a robotics SaaS business, right? You know, the way uh, robots will be designed, built, manufactured and uh, sold. Uh, so SaaS is a massive opportunity. Um, yeah, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll, you know, Nirish made an interesting point where he said that invest investment is a cyclical business, and I think it's two elements. It's, it's very cyclical, but it's also fundamental, right? Uh, if you look at uh, Inventus has Policy Bazaar, we have Total Mint. If you look at the way InsureTech will be uh, bought and sold and distributed, you know, it's interesting. But the fundamentals, right? Roti Kapda Makan. I think if you look at healthcare. Uh, uh, you look at fintech, for example, right? I mean, you look at the number of unicorns that have started in social commerce and uh, media content. We have coup in our own portfolio. So I think there are fundamental businesses that technology is using to transform them. And it's very interesting that if you think about it, you know, people actually go and target startups to go, the startups go and target startups, you know, to become the customers. But you really want to go and talk to old economy, right? The biggest beneficiaries of technology will be the old economy, right? Which would be old tech because the impact that they can transfer warehousing, industrial goods, uh, factories can be transformed so much more, right? Because they're, they're literally skipping the sort of digital revolution. Um, so if you look at sectors, I think all of these above, I think healthcare, fintech, e-commerce and all, and SaaS again is huge, right? Because basically from Bangalore and Gurgaon, you can, and Pune, you can build the world's best companies. Uh, and it's like India's Y2K moment, right? For product. So, uh, the next, I will also say healthcare. I mean, if the, the, the next decade, if you look at, you know, I mean, vaccines and healthcare, both on the consumer side, you look at farm EG today's, you know, going to take off. Um, and uh, you know, we in the US has become like a you know SaaS unicorn. So healthcare, biotech will also be very very interesting sectors. All right, Swati, ma'am. Uh, so I mean, I will try to answer the question a little differently. I mean, at okay. Inventus, we support sectors. So any, like I mentioned earlier, any tech founder is is welcome to pitch to us. Uh, I think uh, Anilesh and Sanjay did speak about uh, the themes and trends. So I'll, I'll speak about what excites me in particular. Uh, so I think uh, the areas where I'm looking for are FinTech, uh, credit given the unorganized nature and, and the low credit penetration in India too and below. Uh, insurance, uh, especially especially on the facilitating the claim side, which it's still a pain point to many, many users. Women's health, uh, a theme which is uh, not garnered the required attention so far, but it's picking up fast as more and more uh, women enter enter workforce. So, so these are two or three things that that I would like to see. I, I'm particularly excited about. All right, ma'am, you spoke a little bit earlier about how you don't just offer funding, but you'll also offer mentorship, mentorship. to the startups in your portfolio. So. Could you talk a little bit about how young first time founders should go about trying to find a good mentorship for themselves? Right. So I would, uh, I think the, the, this is the old mantra around it. Reach out. Uh, hmm. A lot of us are inhibited or, you know, that, that shyness comes from, uh, what if I hear a no, but I would say until you ask, you'll never know, go for it. Uh, seek out people. Uh, in, in your interest areas, more often than not, you'll hear a yes. Reach out to people like, I mean, if, for example, if you think I can help in any way, please reach out to me and we'll be able to tell you uh, in, in your domain, whatever we know out of our experience. So, so that will be my uh, advice to, to young entrepreneurs out there. Uh, please reach out to people, figure out, uh, uh, you know, industry experts or uh, domain knowledge experts in your area and, and go for it. Okay, Sanjay, sir, do you have uh, uh, absolutely? You know, I'll give an example, right? Uh, you've got three of us on the panel tonight, and you know, uh, many of us immediately said yes, also because there is a there's a network, right? And it's not really mentoring per se, but there's a connect. I think I uh, I like the point that Swati said to pick up on that. I think what she's basically saying that you have to find a connect, right? Find either it's an interest, it could be alumni network. There's so many different types of networks to get mentored. 
I'll also say this is perhaps the most important point, right? I think mentoring today is sometimes not as understood. It's also overused, right? People uh, will say uh, it's important to find a mentor, uh, you know, really for the long term and somebody's really interested in you. And you hear this word sometimes like don't be an echo chamber, right? Of what do you actually want from a mentor or a group of mentors is telling you sometimes what you don't want to hear. And uh, telling you how you can improve, not just saying, "Oh, you're doing a fantastic job. Do more of the same." Um, I will also say that uh, you know, in Bloom, for example, we built a uh, built a platform from day one. Where so so you'll hear this also that capital is today capital is a commodity. Right? The best founders are saying that uh, you know, tell me how you're going to help me. Right? You know, it's reverse pitch. You heard this word. Uh, uh, it is it, you know, tell uh, besides capital or beyond capital, what are the different ways? So. Uh, in in Loom, for example, we built a platform where we help them with hiring, with finance and accounting, with uh, of course access to you know uh, besides access to capital, also access to uh, founders in our own ecosystem that can help them. And mentoring is also has to be you know it's not just a one-time activity, right? What I would tell uh, you know prospective young students and prospective uh, entrepreneurs, founders is that uh, it make it a habit, right? Uh, uh, you know what you seek. Seek from the mentor. What do you want from them? Mentors don't take anything back, but it has to be some something that's sustained. And uh, you know, think of mentorship as lifelong, like learning, right? That it has to be lifelong. And uh, you know, there has to also be a right matching. So yeah, I, it's it's extremely important. Right, Nilesh sir, anything to add to this? Yeah, I think uh, uh, you know what is uh, what founders should know is. That uh, VC is not just about capital. Yeah? Uh, VC brings a wealth of experience. Uh, you know, Sanjay said he's invested in hundred startups. That's a wealth of experience. And uh, you know, along with his founders, I'm sure he's learned a few things <laughs> not to do, uh, and few things that that can be done well. And that uh, you know, so uh, you know, founders should leverage. It's also about leveraging. Uh, you know, the the VC. You know, partner or the VC networks uh, to just get smarter and uh, must understand that you know you 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 know a lot, but but there's still a lot to know, uh, and and so the more help you can get, the fewer mistakes that you will make. Right. Okay. Um, I think we'll go to audience questions now. Before that, we're going to put a form in the chat for feedback. It would be great if. All of you could take a few minutes to fill that. I have a few questions of my own that I do want to cover, but I'll do that after we are done with the audience questions. One of the first ones here is, do you think financial stability in one's life is important before venturing into the startup world? And uh, I'll rather say, would you, are you as, um, open to funding college founders as you are to people with industry experience is the decision making process different for both those groups of people uh, sanjay sir we'll start with you sure again uh, you know great question tough question also no easy answer uh, i'll answer the second part first i mean we've already done it right uh, and both happen to be bits uh, if you look at some and akash at gray orange and uh, again abhay sanchitej at for pixel uh, so, you know, they're putting the money where their mouth is. Um, the, uh, there, there are no rules, right? Uh, you know, it's not like, like Swati also is talking about the fundamentals. There's, it's not like a quota system that, you know, we will do two, three college startups a year. I mean, those startups were funded based on the merit and it was exactly the same. Uh, to your first question about financial stability, again, it's interesting. Uh, you know, it's always a balance. No, it's a, uh, the way I'll answer it is that. Uh, uh, you know, we won't fund, let me tell you what we want. We won't fund a team that comes to us and says, you know, we've got this great idea and, you know, we both, we all have a couple of jobs and unless they've proven it before, right. Uh, say that, you know, give us funding so we can leave our jobs. We won't do that. Right. Because you have to have a commitment to start. Uh, it's not a conditional kind of thing. That's one. Uh, I think what young founders have the advantage of that is that you have nothing to lose. Right. I mean. You know, in the US, at least, you know, you have sometimes business school grads, they've got debt to pay, and yet they do a startup. And that's a lot of commitment, which is fantastic. Uh, when you're younger, you don't have, you have nothing to do, so you can start, which is good. 
but yeah, I, I would also advise uh, founders that it is a long, tough journey, right? Be prepared. I mean, it takes some time just to settle in. You look at page uh, six of ET and you only talk about the successes, right? Nobody talks about the failures. Um, and you talk about the big successes. People only talk about unicorns. So it's a tough journey. Um, I would say the, no, there's no requirement to have financial stability, but it's very important that the founders know that it's a very long-term journey, right? You're talking about uh, a 10-year journey. You might get series A, series B. It's not like you're taking money off the table. Yeah, your salaries will improve. So I would say there are no rules in that sense. Uh, we're really looking for passion. The passion is there, sure. I don't think we're looking for somebody's bank balance and saying, you know, how much do you have the bank that will fund you. All right. So Ati, ma'am. Uh, I would just add Sanjay has covered most of it. I'll just quickly add a couple of points. Uh, I think uh, founders are and need to be capital efficient at each stage. So, and especially when they are beginning, they, they do account for the kind of take home uh, salaries or what they do for, or, you know, for their team as well. I mean, more, more often than not, uh, you know, founders are the last ones to receive uh, a great amount. I mean, if you know, if they're, if they're out of funds, probably they're not giving that salary to themselves. So, you know, it's it has to be a very thought through process when you uh, dive into entrepreneurship. I'll say uh, don't just get in for the money or or because you think it's cool. Uh, it's uh, it's very important. The kind of culture uh, and the kind of thinking you have uh, trickles down to the culture of the firm. It's it's evident in your customer feedback. It's a small ecosystem. So, you know, to get to know about about how a founder thinks. So it's. I would just say that uh, no uh, financial stability uh, to the extent that you think that uh, you know you've thought through it is is to that extent is important, not more or not not less. I would say. All right, Nile, sir, do you have a anything to add to this? Uh, you know, I'll only say that uh, you know it doesn't matter whether you're financial stable or not. It doesn't matter whether you have two years experience or ten years experience. Uh, you know, I, I just think you have to be mentally ready to commit 10, 15 years of your life. Yeah, and there is no okay. plan B. Uh, if you have that mindset that we will make this happen. Uh, and I did this when I was 45, right? I mean, we started Trifecta at 45 and there were huge stakes involved. Uh, you know, giving up a level three M, you know, MD career and Accenture and Rahul gave up Canaan. But uh, it it was the passion to do something with our lives, and we said, "Listen, we go to we go to make it happen, regardless." And, and I think we're quite happy with where we've come. Obviously, there's a long way to go. So uh, I also think this is the best time to become an entrepreneur. Yeah. So uh, you know, just just time wise, given the ecosystem, the way it is developing, uh, you know, the attention. The, the the fact that in, imagine how how Flipkart got built 15 uh, years ago there was nothing. Flipkart had to solve all the problems that today are solved for the for the entrepreneur. Yeah, there was no payment gateways, there was no delivery boys, there was no trust, there was no smartphones. All of that has got built now. Right. And so for a founder, I think you know. 30% of the pain has been taken away. All you have to do is ride on top of everything that all these guys have built. So it's, and the kind of support, the capital that is available, you know, we've all grown, Sanjay, I, we've all grown in the ecosystem. So we are far more wise than, than we were, you know, many years ago. So I think this is just an incredible time, uh, but people have to be able to know that this is a long and winding road. And it is, it can get very lonely and you have to be prepared for the next 10, 15 years to give up everything. And if, if you have that resolved, you know, hopefully good will happen. Right. All right. Um, from the form we floated earlier, this is one question that came in for Sanjay, sir. Suppose a SaaS based startup has launched an MVP and has a few organic users, say about 50. What metrics will you look into if they approach you for seed funding or series A, or do you look at anything other than the same metrics? Um, great question again. Uh, no, I think that answer uh, has changed also in the last uh, five years because uh, earlier we didn't have as much, you know, we didn't have uh, the Freshworks and the others that were growing themselves. Now we've seen a lot of these startups come out from some of these companies. 
uh, and you have a lot of successful tech IPOs and M&A is also increasing, right, in the U.S. So there's much more maturity. So I would say that a uh, 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 couple of things, right, uh, in no particular order. I think uh, retention, uh, retention and churn is important, right? Of the 50 customers, how how many are staying? Uh, obviously, growth is the most important. You know, have those 50 stayed? I mean, did they grow from 5, 10 to 25 to 50? I think growth rate is important. Uh, what they call in the US net do dollar retention, again, retention and churn is important. Um, also, revenue concentration. Now, it's very early, right? So, are these paid? Are these pilots? Um, if there's a certain ACV average customer value, you know, uh, have you maxed it out or how much is that going to change? So, basically, I think growth metrics, but around that, uh, you know, is one vertical, different verticals. Uh, I will say that it also comes back to the founding team, right? I mean, if it's a, a great team, then the metrics become less important. But if it's an unknown team, then you really want to find out. Then obviously, uh, uh, you know, the competitive landscape, if you look at areas that are pretty, I mean, uh, you know, uh, we have this joke that everybody wants to do an edtech startup and every VC wants to do start up their own edtech fund, right? Just to fund edtech. So, uh, SaaS is also seeing a lot of the same. So SaaS has also become commoditized because it's in one sense it's a business model. Everything can be SaaS, right? Our class plus, which is tech companies, also a SaaS company. Uh, uh, fintech companies also B two B are SaaS companies today. So uh, I think it depends on what the competitive landscape also is, but it's certainly very attractive. And uh, of course, growth is very important and and retention. Right. Swati, ma'am, this one was for you. Uh, how do you keep a check on the level of involvement you need to have with a portfolio company? Um, I would say if uh, if it's a very early stage company, uh, we tend to get involved a lot uh, because the founder is, and especially if it's a new first time founder, uh, they would need a lot of uh, help with, you know, we help them with our networks, we help them. Uh, with contacts to sell the product, we would also help them in their strategy planning, budgeting, etc. I mean, you know, like I mentioned, even if they put for, if they want to raise their next round. So, for very very early stage founders, the involvement is is more than than what a, a Series A, Series B uh, founder would have. Series B typically, Series A uh, founders also tend to have a lot of involvement. But uh, but I think this is mostly uh, dependent on the team and the product. And it's solely we we don't overimpose ourselves. We we put pitch in and uh, put forward our uh, our time and our uh, resources as and when to the to to what the founder would actually uh, be in need of. So so that's how this is structured. There's no right answer to it, but we're always usually there for them whenever they need us, even if it means a late night call to speak about ka So mm. so that's how this is structured. Right. Uh, Nilesh, sir, if you could take this one for folks who are interested in joining VC firms, would you recommend having work experience and then joining a VC or starting early as an analyst or an associate? How does one enter the VC space? Yeah, sure. So, you know, every good VC firm uh, takes in analysts and analysts are typically undergrads. Um, and, uh, you know, that's a great way to Feel the firm, uh, you know, you don't get to write checks. You don't necessarily get to always work on deals, but you are part of that, that ecosystem. You get to feel, you know, what is happening around you. And so I would generally encourage, uh, you know, uh, people should definitely look out for analyst positions. Uh, most VC firms uh, will take in investment professionals post, uh, post an MBA. And a lot of, uh, uh, you know, analysts would then quit after two years, go to an MBA and, and, and may come back and, and join or look out. Uh, you know, jobs are not easy to get. So, you, you know, uh, so, you know, one should generally be mindful of that. Uh, but as an ecosystem, we are growing, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, we're now doing almost a billion dollars with all these strategic you know investments things like that this could become 10 20 billion dollars a year kind of a market uh, so the ecosystem is growing very fast so if there were five jobs created last year there probably be 20 jobs uh, in the coming years 
So I would encourage anybody who's passionate about investing should definitely go seek out analyst roles. Right. Okay. I did. Uh, no, no, uh, yeah, sure, sure. No, no, very quickly. I was just want to briefly add to that. Uh, it depends very from fund to fund, uh, from firm to firm. And one, another interesting part is, you know, if you go and work for a startup, that is also an interesting way, right? Because if you look at it, many folks who come to VC have typical just investment experience. And if you have a balance, I'm thinking from Bloom, somebody went and spent a year or two at a startup, the way they interact with the founder also will be very different, right? They may not have the analytical ability, but they will have the practical on the ground. So I think that's also an interesting uh, way. No, that's a great point. And we do have, uh, you know, at least four of our employees are entrepreneurs turned investors. So yeah, uh, thanks for, uh, for clarifying that uh, Sanjay. Right. Okay. I wanted the last question to be, um, what advice you all have for college kids and what skills maybe you think they should learn during their time at college. But before that, I feel like I need to ask, what are some of your favorite me memories from your days at bits? Maybe just like a little bit of one story, maybe to each of you, if you, we could do that. Swati ma'am, we'll start with you. Oh, I, I climbed the clock tower at Bits Pilani. I think uh, chased by the, chased by the guards there. I think I'll remember that forever. But I think what I miss about Bits is uh, the Sam charts at Reddy's. You don't find them here. You don't find them anywhere. Uh, you know, the Lacha sessions, uh, which will, which, which was, I think, and the attendance system. You can choose to go in, choose to get out, uh, choose your classes, not go at 8 a.m. Those are things which which you miss in life. I think uh, that's that's what I that was I, that's what I cherish about bits most. Sanjay sir, no, that that's great, Swati, to hear that. Uh, I think two quick things. Uh, one, I you know I went on a gliding trip once. Uh, I mean, flight. Uh, obviously, as a passenger, just did that once. And what is amazing is. You just see from the top, you see this wonderful oasis. You see miles and miles of desert all around, and you see this beautiful, uh, you know, Saraswati Mandir and this oasis in the middle, which is why it is called Oasis, which is wonderful. I'll never forget that. Uh, uh, like Swati, I think, uh, um, you know, I think uh, uh, the fact that it was modeled on the American system and you can take classes from whoever you want, whenever you want. Uh, you have open book exams that are sort of that you can call anybody, call a friend or bring in any book and you still can't solve the answers, which is amazing. Uh, but I think uh, the camaraderie, right? Uh, and this, I think, happens only in a non-city campus. It cannot happen in a city. Uh, uh, you know, taking a break at 2 a.m., going out, having samosas and chai and gulab jamuns, which is why till today I can't sleep before 1 a.m., which is true. And I, I'm a totally uh, night owl. Uh, and... Uh, that is amazing. I think it is those relationships that you form for life. For life, actually, that is the most special part of this. That's awesome. Nilesh, sir? You know, I've got lots of, lots of memories, uh, but uh, I think when I think of birds, uh, you know, I think of the clock tower, I think of the, you know, uh, the temple, I, I, I think of, uh, you know, Maggie at uh, Moon, I think of, uh, you know, our birthday parties, every time we had to, we had to have a special party, like a birthday party, we would go to Jal Tarang. I don't think you guys heard of it, but Jal Tarang was, was in Loharu, some 30 kilometers away. And we used to go with our pawas and, and, uh, you know, order dal makhani and, and, and paneer and whatnot. Um, and Oasis, of course. Yeah, that was just, you know, it was, I think, uh, one generally went into, you know, and kind of, you know, emptiness after after the Oasis. I mean, we used to work so hard to make Oasis successful, you know, as part of the photography club there. And, uh, you know, there's just incredible what, what we, you know, what we managed to conduct and the number of people who came and the quality of the events. Uh, just so many memories. And, and Sanjay said it right you know correctly i think bits has a bits things have a very different personality and i'm so glad that you know we have similar culture similar ethos uh, similar personality developing in the other campuses as well and i i had the opportunity of visiting both the campuses uh bitsians are very different and they have a very different personality and sometimes you can actually make out hey, yoga 
and I am also, you know, amazed that, you know, despite of uh, of having spent our time at a village, we've actually been one of the most enterprising communities globally. And, uh, you know, uh, including the VC community, there is a bit in, you know, in every VC fund. So take advantage of that, guys. And, uh, you know, Sanjay writes a check to anybody who's a Bitsian. Uh, so just, you know, feel free to reach out to him. And now we have Swati. Uh, but there's a Bitsian in every VC fund. And every third, you know, great company is a, is a Bitsian company. So it's just a phenomenal ecosystem. Uh, you know, we should leverage one another as much as we can. That's That's amazing. Uh, we'll close with this last one uh, question that all, I want all of you to answer. What do you think is are some skills that people or some traits that people should develop while they are in college? And what advice do you have for students in bits right now? Nilesa, we'll start with you. Of course, uh, you know, I actually don't have any advice. I, I just, uh, you know, I told my son this and I, I tell everybody, just have fun. Yeah, don't take academics too seriously. Uh, just have fun, uh, build friendships, uh, you know, which which will last forever. You know, I still go for my morning walks with my closest friends from BITS, uh, you know, 30 years later. So uh, just have a lot of fun. Uh, you know, there is so much outside of academics that happens in BITS. Uh, try to be part of that. Uh, try to learn from, you know, fellow uh, students. Who all come with incredible talent, incredible uh, you know culture, incredible uh, passion. So uh, you know, just soak in all of that. Uh, you know, I have never seen an engineer fail. So uh, you know, grades don't matter so much. Uh, and uh, you know, unless of course you want to you want to get into a McKinsey or something, it's it's all fine. Uh, and and uh, you know, at least Sanjay and I were not uh, nine pointers. We've done okay. Yeah, that that's great. I, I, it's so sad that there's a whole batch of people that have no context for what it really means to be Bitsy and the like. The current first year batch, they haven't been to campus at all. So, so I think yeah, which is sad. Which is sad, but you know, yeah. hopefully they'll get to see three years. Yeah. Swati, so ma'am, what about you? Uh, I would say it's indeed the golden periods of your life. I mean, cherish every bit of it. It's not as light out out of campus. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's like I mentioned, allows you a lot of flexibility to choose your courses, your career paths. So go ahead, try out different things to find your North Star. I have particularly found the alumni network very, very useful. So feel, feel, feel free to reach out, network as much with your with your friends. These, these are you are in an in, uh, in an elite company. I mean, you know, you struggled hard to be where you are. So. Uh, these are guys who five years, 10 years down the line would be leading institutions in their respective fields. So, so stay in touch, try to be, uh, try to know as many people in the campus as, as you can. That's great. And yeah, make great friends. Yeah. Sanjay, sir. Sure. Uh, no. So, uh, you know, uh, because this is the bits family, I uh, sort of share, I'm going through that myself, my, where my son is headed to college, uh, this fall. You know, Nilesh has already graduated from college and doing a couple of startups. So I've seen that. Uh, uh, what I would say is that, you know, you know, uh, you're, uh, and what I'm basically saying is that, uh, you know, try different things and try and get a, a, a range of things and, you know, get breadth very early on because you can always specialize later. Now, of course, if somebody wants to, you know, develop the next robotic chip or something like that's fine. But learn a broad range of skills. When I went to business school, I remember one of the deans said that think of a campus as a place to fail safely. You can fail safely. Right? You can do a summer internship, do something that you don't think you'd like, and maybe you figure out you don't like it. Better to figure out in an internship than in a job, right? So try different things and fail, right? I mean, it's a, it's a safety net. You can fail while, and you have four years to fail. In business school, you have or master's, you have two years to fail. So try very, very different things. Try things, push yourself in a comfort zone. Try things that uh, you've never done before, right? And learn from people uh, uh, and, and you know, acquire a range of skills. 
because life's always there to specialize better. That's all I'll say. And like, I think Nilesh was the same thing. When he says fun, it's about adventure, right? I mean, you know, we, it's a cliche, but people call it like adventure capital, venture capital. Nobody talks about all the mistakes and all the time you've invested. We all talk about this, but that's what it is, right? You take risks and you will make mistakes uh, and, uh, you know, and have fun and, uh, but take those risks. That's great. Thank you guys so much for taking the time. Aryan, uh, Sidan, sorry, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Swati, ma'am. Thank you, Sanjay, sir, for coming to this talk. And thank you, everyone, who also attended this talk. I hope it was helpful and it was insightful. So, yeah, now we've come to the end of the talk. So, thank you so much. Good night. All the best. Thank you, guys. Stay safe. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Good weekend. Bye. Bye bye.